word for today is Psalm 22, 1. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Welcome to the weekly online worship service of the Yerkesville, Janaden, Hutton, and Fry's Valley Moravian congregations. It's good to have you with us at this time as we share together in worship. Today is Sunday, June 16th, 2024, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And in our secular calendar, this is Father's Day. Within the church, Father's Day is an opportunity for us to celebrate all men who have been spiritual influences for good in our lives. It's a day we give thanks not only for our natural fathers, but those who have served as spiritual fathers for us as well. Now, I'm Pastor Dave Geyer, and I will be assisting in leading today's service, and I'll be bringing the message, which I've entitled, Small Things Growing. And there is one announcement I would highlight at this time. Camps are coming quickly, and if you are on our email list on Friday, you should have received camp registration materials, but I would especially highlight the registration materials for Tar Hollow Camp, which is our camp, our Mid-States Camp, offered to youth who have completed seventh grade up through post high. Now, Tar Hollow registrations are due this week in our church office in order for folks to receive a campership benefit. You can mail them in, you can email them in, you can drop them off. There's an envelope on the shared ministry office door, which is located in the Janaden facility, but we need those registrations this week. And let me remind you that if you have a young person associated with our partnership in any way, um, not only are they eligible for our campership benefit, but if they bring a friend, that friend is also eligible. And so camp is very affordable. But again, we need those Tar Hollow registrations in this coming week. And thank you for your assistance with that. And now let's quiet our hearts as we begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we have chosen to set aside this time to be with you. And we ask that the space we find ourselves in now, the space as we share in this video, that it might become holy ground, holy space, filled with your presence. Lord, we long to draw near to you, and we welcome and invite you to draw near to us during this time of worship. We ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen.
pray with me? Dear God, we come to you today expressing our joy, the joy that we feel for the summer and for all four seasons that we have. We come with joy of spending time with family and friends and just living our lives as we like and as we choose. We also come to you with concerns, those who have been named and those who are on our hearts. Watch over them, reach your healing hand or your comforting hand to help guide them. We will pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. And now it's time for a moment for God's children of all ages. Hey there, kids. You know what today is, right? Today is Father's Day. It's a day we give thanks for dads, and within the church, it's a day we give thanks for all those men who have had a special role in our lives, who've taught us about life and faith. Now, if your dad's in the room, or if someone you love like a dad is there, you need to pause this video and give them a big hug right now. And if you're thinking of someone who maybe isn't in the room with you, maybe somebody that lives somewhere else, well, perhaps you'll give them a call or write a little note letting them know how special they are. This is a day we give thanks for those men who've been spiritual fathers and natural fathers to us all. I'm thankful for those men. You know, someone else I'm thankful for is teachers. Now, many of you kids, if you go to school, you might have a big smile on your face right now because... It's summer vacation. And you know what? Many of those school teachers who work so hard to teach you throughout the year, well, they probably got a big smile on their face right now too because it's summer vacation. We give thanks to God for the teachers in our lives who give so much to serve us and to help us learn. And did you know that Jesus was a teacher too? That's right. Jesus taught grown-ups and kids, too, about some of the most important things of all. He taught folks things like how to live and what's really important in life and how to know God and how we can be part of bringing about God's good will for this world. And Jesus is a pretty amazing teacher. I believe he was the greatest teacher that ever lived. Even though it's been 2,000 years since he first began teaching, ever since then, generation after generation, all the way up to today, people around the world continue to study and learn from Jesus' teachings. And one of the ways Jesus liked to teach was by telling parables. Parables are stories taken from everyday life. The stories were often simple enough, and who doesn't like a good story? But Jesus' parables were not just interesting stories, 
It was a way he taught people things. You see, each of Jesus' parables contains a lesson, something important for people to learn. But the lessons in Jesus' parables, they're not always obvious. Often parables are kind of like puzzles. People need to think about them and puzzle over them in their head and try to solve them, to try to solve them and discover their lesson. Of course, another approach to solving Jesus' parables was to do what his disciples often did. Sometimes they would go to Jesus and ask him to explain the meaning and help them solve the puzzle. And when they did, he would usually help them understand. He would give them the answers because he wanted them to understand. Now, Jesus' disciples passed on many of Jesus' parables to us, and often they also wrote down the meanings that Jesus explained to them. But not always. Sometimes they just wrote down the parables without revealing the lesson. They give us the opportunity to try our hand at solving the puzzle and discovering Jesus' lesson for ourselves. And that's the case in the Bible reading we just read. Jesus tells two stories from everyday life. Both have something to do with seeds and plants. And he gives the hint that the hidden meanings of these parables have something to say about the kingdom of God, something to do with the way God is working in the world, something to do with the way God's future will unfold and the way the good things God wants for the world are coming and will come to pass. Those are clues But then it's up to us to work on the puzzle and to try to discover what Jesus is saying to us through the parables. That's a tough task, but we'll give it a shot in the grown-up message coming shortly. And maybe God's Holy Spirit will help us if we ask, because Jesus wants us to solve those puzzles and to learn those lessons. Let's pray together now, shall we? I'll pray and you can pray after me. Lord Jesus, every day you have something to teach us. Something about life, about God, about ourselves, about what's really important. We want to learn from you today. We ask your Holy Spirit to help us. Amen.
So at the heart of our gospel reading today are two of Jesus' parables. And these, are the, these parables fall within the category of parables that are recorded in the gospels, but the exact message that Jesus wants us to come away with, well, that's not recorded. That's left up, up to us to puzzle over and to wrestle with. The one clue we're given by Jesus is that when we solve the puzzle, it's going to say something about the kingdom of God. So Jesus doesn't spell out the exact meaning of today's two parables, but after spending a fair amount of time meditating on these lately, I'm going to give you what I think they might be saying. But of course, if you look at them and you come away with something different, who's to say if you aren't closer to Jesus' meaning than I am? But in any case, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts at this time. So as we consider these two parables, the parable of the person scattering seeds, the parable of the mustard seed, I've come to come around to think that their intended messages, while different from one another, actually are complementary and interrelate. So let's start with the parable of the mustard seed. It's a really familiar parable. If you've grown up in the church, you've probably heard this a lot of times. If you were a kid in the church, one time or another, you were probably handed a little mustard seed and you were to notice how small it is. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like that mustard seed, which even though it's one of the tiniest of seeds, it grows into one of the largest of bushes, as big as a tree, so big that birds can nest in it. And that's the parable. So what's Jesus getting at here? Well, something that I found helpful in seeking to unlock the hidden messages that Jesus is trying to teach through his parables is to look for something unexpected or surprising or a twist of some sort and to start by focusing on that. And in this parable, the surprising thing seems to me that such a tiny seed can grow into such a massive Plant. In other words, that in God's way of doing things, really small things can have big results. In other words, in God's economy, little things are significant. Little things matter. Now, as so I thought about, I, about this, I was reminded of the other parable, the mustard seed. You remember that one where Jesus equates that tiny mustard seed with a tiny bit of faith. Jesus might be saying that the smallest acts that you and I do in faith can lead to bigger results in God's kingdom than we could ever have imagined. And, you know, we see that in the Gospels, don't we? I mean, I think, for example, of that little boy who gave his lunch, a few loaves and fish to Jesus. It was all he had, but it wasn't much. But Jesus used that to feed 5,000 people, a multitude. Jesus took his little act of faith and used it to bring results far greater than we could have ever imagined. Little did that boy know it that just by giving his lunch, such wonderful things would result, and the kingdom of God's like that. Or I think of Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Remember his story? Well, at one point, Jesus asked if he can come over to dinner. And it, with really a small act of hospitality, Jesus, or I'm sorry, Zacchaeus opens his door to Jesus. And by the time that meal is done, Zacchaeus has experienced such an outpouring of God's grace that he will never be the same. Yet it all came from just this smallest act of hospitality, welcoming Jesus into his home and his life has changed. The kingdom of God works like that. Small acts offered in faith have tremendous results in God's kingdom. But I don't think it's just our faith that's significant. I think of a famous quote by Mother Teresa. Now she's Saint Teresa. Perhaps you've heard this quote before. Not all of us can do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. And I believe this too is part of the message of Jesus' parable. The smallest acts we do in love in God's kingdom can have results far beyond anything we might imagine. I think of the, the poor old woman in the temple who out of love for God gives all she has, two little pennies, puts them in the offering. Everybody else thinks it's nothing, but when Jesus looks at it, he says, no, she has given more than all of these others. 
her small, in the world's eyes, small act of love and devotion to God has a result far beyond anything that anyone could have imagined, and we still tell her story today. Or I think of Jesus' famous parable of the sheep and the goats, where he looks upon folks and he says, you know, that small act of love and kindness you did to that person who was sick, who was lonely, who was hungry, who was naked, you acted on their behalf, you expressed love for them, and you probably didn't even think about it when you did it. But that little thing you did to that smallest a person, well, it's just like you did it for me. Can you imagine having the opportunity to do something for Jesus? And he says we can. Small acts given in great love. Small things can have big results in God's kingdom. But how is it that this happens? I believe that Jesus is giving us the answer to this in the other parable from our reading today, the parable of the person scattering seeds. Now, in this parable, parable, the person goes out, goes out the field and throws out some seeds, some grain, and then they walk away. They go home. They go on about their business, sleeping and rising, doing life. But in the meantime, while they're not even noticing, you know those seeds they planted? Why, they're starting to sprout, and then stocks are growing, until in time they produced a full head of grain and a field full of grain. And now the person who scattered those seeds a while ago, well, they look out and lo and behold, there's this whole field of grain. All they did was throw some seeds on the ground, but now there's this field of grain. And with joy, they go and grab their sickle and they start harvesting. And that's the parable. And so again, as we seek to solve the puzzle and discover the underlying message, we begin by looking for something that seems unexpected or surprising, or the twist. And in this story, I believe the twist is that that person does something small and unimportant, but important. They scatter those seeds like they did in the last parable, but these small seeds have big results. But the added nuance in this parable is that those added results, well, they weren't the act of the person who threw the seeds. That person just threw the seeds in the field. The miracle happened when God took their small act. It was God who took that small act and multiplied it into a great harvest. Or to put it another way, in the kingdom of God, God can take our small things and use them for God's big results. In other words, our part is to do the small things and God's part is to bring the unexpected harvest. We have a part is to do the small things, but the way the kingdom of God comes is when God takes those little things we do, we do and works miracles through them. There's a, a verse in the prophets that says, do not despise the day of small things. And I think that's tied into this message. We should not discount the smallest things we do in faith, in love. So this has hit home for me in a very personal way of late. As many in our online audience may not know, on Thursday, June 6th, my dad, Leroy Geyer, passed away. And this was in the midst of a family vacation that he had made possible by renting a home, and we had gathered as many of his grandkids who could make it, and the whole family was there, and we were secretly planning to surprise him with a day to honor him and, and celebrate him. Sadly, things took a different turn. He was hospitalized almost after we arrived. We were expecting his release, but it didn't happen. And he died quite suddenly on June 6th. I was with him at the time. Now, as you can imagine, and even in more ways than you can imagine, this has been a very, it was a very painful time. Yet there was much grace and God was present as well. And afterwards, we went through the experience many of you have gone through with the funeral, the calling hours, for me, preparing a memoir. And during that time, I was blown away as person after person were coming to pay their respects, and they would tell me the impact that my father had had on their lives. Now, I knew my dad really well, warts and all. I also know he was a man of deep faith. He knew his Bible inside and out. He really wanted to live for God. And yet, I had never had any appreciation 
of the impact that he had had on others' lives until they came to me, one after the other, describing small acts of faith, small acts of love that he was responsible for, things he probably forgot about, but they had had a lasting impact. Some folks coming and telling me stories from 20 or 30 years before that continued to impact their lives for good, ways that the little seed that he had planted in faith and love, the way God had taken that seed and worked a miracle through it, multiplied its effects far beyond anything that could have been expected. And on this Father's Day weekend, it's an opportunity for all of us to reflect not only on the lives of our dads, but also on the lives of all men who have had that kind of influence on our lives, who have planted their seeds of love and faith in us. And not just the men at Fry's Valley Moravian Church this weekend will be celebrating the 167th anniversary of the congregation, and I will be inviting them, as I invite you now, to reflect on your journey and what has brought you to where you are in your life of faith. It wouldn't surprise me if, as you look back, you will find small little moments, small acts of faith, small acts of love, offered towards you by someone else, things perhaps they never even thought of at the time, but have had a lasting and hugely magnified impact on who you are today in your life of faith. Little, the smallest act, little seeds, they planted in faith, in love, that God has used to perform a miracle through in your life. Friends, let us not despise the day of small things. Small things can have big results in the kingdom of God. God can take our smallest acts offered in faith and love and use them for God's big results, for God's miraculous results. That's how it works in the kingdom of God. Amen. And now our benediction. As we go from this space, we may not be given the opportunity to do the great things, but let us not discount the small things. Yes, as we go from this place, let us look for opportunities to do the small things with great love and great faith. For through such, God can work mighty wonders. For such is the way the kingdom of God comes. Go in peace. Amen.